This is the second part of our lecture in DNA Technology and Genetic Engineering. Last time, we have discussed some methods in DNA technology such as DNA sequencing, polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis, and DNA fingerprinting. Therefore, we now have an idea on how researchers determine the nucleotide sequence of an extracted DNA. We have also learned how we could make more copies of DNA fragments and how the DNA are used in identifying an individual through DNA fingerprinting. In this lecture, we will discuss further into DNA technology to learn how genetic engineering locate, identify, and use genes to manipulate or alter a cell or a whole organism. By knowing the sequence of a DNA, Researchers were able to analyze its structure and the genes that it contains. With this knowledge, they were able to cut, splice, and clone the DNA. And this is the process that we call recombinant DNA technology. Its goal is to transfer pieces of DNA and the genes that it contains from one organism into another. The most common use of recombinant DNA technology is in the production of useful protein products using bacteria. Here, a specific gene is inserted into a bacteria so that the bacteria will be induced to produce the specific proteins that the gene encodes for. Like the previous tools that we have discussed, recombinant DNA technology also requires specialized tools and components. First is restriction enzymes. These are naturally occurring enzymes in bacteria that break the bonds between specific neighboring base pairs in a DNA strand. There are many kinds of restriction enzymes, but the most useful in recombinant DNA technology are those that make their cuts in palindromic sequences. Palindromes are words that read the same backwards as forwards. An example of this is the word race car. If you read the word race car backwards, it will still be read as race car. In this example, we have a double-stranded DNA that has a palindromic sequence. One of its strands reads as adenine, adenine, thymine, thymine. And if you read its complementary strand, it also reads as adenine, adenine, thymine, thymine. Therefore, a specific restriction enzyme for this palindromic sequence will make a cut in this area, leaving two single-stranded cut ends. These cut ends are complementary with each other and to any other DNA that is cut by the same restriction enzyme. After being cut by the restriction enzyme, DNA ligases will then bind the DNA fragments back together. Another component of recombinant DNA technology are plasmids. Plasmids are small, circular, self-replicating DNA molecules that are also found in bacteria. They are not part of the normal bacterial chromosome, but they contain genes that are important for bacterial replication. These plasmids are useful as they could be extracted from the bacteria and then be combined with a foreign DNA and be inserted back into the bacteria. Once reinserted, the recombined plasmids will then be cloned every time the bacteria undergoes cell reproduction. Finally, recombinant DNA technology requires the bacteria. This is where the plasmids will be extracted and reinserted back. This is an overview on how recombinant DNA is produced. Here, we have the bacteria where the plasmid will be extracted, and here is a human cell where the DNA of interest will be extracted. After extracting the plasmid and the DNA, the restriction enzyme will be added to them. Take note that it is important that the same restriction enzymes will be used so that the single-stranded cut ends of both the plasmids and the human DNA will have the same sequence. The DNAs will then be mixed together and the human DNA with the complementary cut ends can now pair with the plasmid.
DNA ligases will then be added to bind the human and the plasmid together, forming what we call the recombinant DNA or recombinant plasmids. This will be reinserted back into the bacteria and the recombinant DNA will be cloned every time the bacteria undergo cell reproduction. This bacterium, where the recombinant DNA was reinserted, is one, an, one example of what we call the transgenic organism. Transgenic organisms are organisms produced through genetic engineering wherein they carry one or more genes from a different species. This includes plants and animals. However, bacteria have become the go-to organism of the genetic engineering industry. One reason is because they readily take up plasmids that contain foreign DNA, and another reason is because their reproduction cycles are short, meaning by continuously reproducing the transgenic bacteria, you could already have an unlimited supply of the protein. One of the most common use for transgenic bacteria is in the production of essential human proteins such as insulin, which regulates the blood sugar level, the tissue plasminogen activator, which prevents or reverses the clotting of blood, and the human blood clotting factor 8, which is used to treat hemophilia. Another use of transgenic bacteria is in manufacturing of citric acid and alcohol and in cleaning up of toxic waste and oil pollutants. Shown in this photo are colonies of transgenic pseudomonas fluorescens, which are made to glow as they digest naphthalene, one of environmental pollutants in the world. Creating transgenic plants are somewhat more difficult than creating transgenic bacteria as plant cells do not readily take up plasmids. The most common way to create a transgenic plant is by using a bacteria that could infect plants. Gene of interest will be transferred into the bacteria through the recombinant DNA technology. The transgenic bacteria will then be incubated together with the embryonic plant cells and few of those plant cells may take up and incorporate their recombinant plasmids into their own genetic material. The plant cells with the desired DNA will be identified and will be regenerated into entire plants with the desired traits. Transgenic plants have been modified for agricultural and medicinal purposes. This photo shows a normal leaf and its transgenic counterpart, which is modified to grow larger. This is for the purpose of better photosynthesis and faster growth. Another example is the genetically engineered golden rice, which is modified to have high beta-carotene content, which could help in improving human nutrition. Production of transgenic animals is even harder than production of transgenic plants. One reason is that animal cells do not take up plasmids like bacteria and plant cells. Another thing is that techniques for cloning animals are more complex than for cloning plants. Usually, producing a transgenic animal uses mature egg cells. However, only few mature egg cells will be available at one time which will result to limited number of transgenic animals produced. But despite these challenges, the production of transgenic animals are moving forward. Pharmaceutical companies have been applying gene farming to produce desired human proteins. Gene farming refers to the process of inserting human genes that codes for useful protein into dairy animals such as goats, sheep, and cows. Preferably, larger female mammals are used because it's possible to obtain the desired protein solely from their milk rather than having to extract blood from animals or kill a transgenic animal to obtain protein from its blood. Here is an overview on how gene farming is done. Plasmids containing the DNA of interest will be injected into the nucleus of a mature egg cell. This mature egg cell will then be implanted into a female dairy animal. 
The offspring's DNA will then be analyzed to see if it has incorporated the desired DNA into its own genetic material. If the desired DNA is expressed, the protein will be secreted in the milk. The milk will then be collected for the isolation of the desired human protein.